Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm an archivist in Special Collections at the Harold Washington Library Center. I'm a part of the Chicago Public Library Archives and Special Collections Division. In addition to the many archival collections we have, we also have a wide selection of special materials like artifacts, rare books, and works of art. Using Mouse, this year's One Book, One Chicago selection, as a jumping off point, I'm excited to talk with you today about book arts and how literature and art can influence and inspire each other. Mouse is a graphic novel that tells the story of author Art Spiegelman's Jewish parents in Poland in the 1940s. The book details their experiences with anti-Semitism and their internment at the Auschwitz concentration camp. In the book, Spiegelman portrays Jews as mice and the Nazis as cats. Mouse explores often difficult but very important themes, and it's also the first graphic novel to win a Pulitzer Prize. Graphic novels use what's called sequential art, a combination of words and pictures in sequence, to create one cohesive narrative, a beautiful marriage of art and literature. Graphic novels and comics use a visual language to tell stories, and in that sense, they are a type of book art. But graphic novels are just one way that art and literature can overlap. And this year's One Book, One Chicago selection isn't the first time that the program has examined the intersection of art and literature. Join me as we take a look back at a very special way the One Book, One Chicago program has inspired some wonderful examples of books as art. Launched in the fall of 2001 with To Kill a Mockingbird, One Book, One Chicago encourages Chicagoans to read and respond to the same literary work at the same time. Readers have explored history, grappled with diverse themes, and journeyed through the lives of the characters in each One Book, One Chicago selection. Literature that challenges readers who engage with new ideas hasn't always been celebrated. In fact, many of the past One Book, One Chicago titles I'll talk about today, including Mouse, have been challenged or outright banned in communities around the country. In the case of Mouse, a school board in Tennessee voted unanimously in January 2022 to ban the book from being taught in its district's classrooms. It cited inappropriate content for students, including profanity, nudity, and depictions of violence. It was removed from the eighth grade curriculum. The One Book, One Chicago program has intentionally chosen to embrace literature as a means of bringing Chicagoans together to confront difficult ideas and to learn from others' experiences. In 2006 and 2011, on the 5th and 10th anniversaries of the program, the library invited book artists and bookbinders to react to these very same books by interpreting them in the form of book art. Each binder was tasked with creating a bound piece of art that visually reflected some aspect of a One Book One Chicago title. The pieces were then put on display. With 10 titles and about 50 books in each exhibit, viewers were able to compare and contrast multiple artistic interpretations of the same One Book One Chicago titles. This exploration follows in the footsteps of a long tradition of great works of art that have influenced acclaimed literature, and great literature that has inspired profound works of art. Now, let's explore some of the artist books and fine bindings created for these innovative exhibits. Elsie Vastel Ellis created an artist book inspired by Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. Artist books are distinct in that they use the book as a medium to create a broader art piece. Disguised in a relatively innocuous box, Inside, Ellis has created a tactile piece of art that directly references the characters and stories in O'Brien's text. This creation invites the viewer to interact with it. Each door opens to reveal a thing that is carried by the characters in the text. Even if the viewer of this piece hasn't read the book, they can still connect to the piece's evocative, emotional, and personal exploration of humanity, conflict, and the gray areas of memory. As recently as 2020, 
the things they carried has been challenged and banned for reasons related to profanity and sexual content. Sarah Lucen Otto's interpretation of To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee is done in a more traditional fine binding style that incorporates high quality leather, hand sewn end bands, and inlays. Like creators of artist books, fine bookbinders are also deeply inspired by the text of the book they are binding. However, rather than using the book as a medium, they instead draw upon the content of the work to design a more traditional book rooted in the time-honored trade of hand bookbinding. In this binding, Otto chose to break the book up into two physical parts, aligning with the text that is written in two parts. For this very graphic design choice to reveal itself, both parts of the book need to be present. This interpretation of To Kill a Mockingbird by James Tapley incorporates sculptural and tactile elements with a more traditionally bound book as well. In his binder statement, Tapley recalls that he first read the book as a child and was struck by the recurring presence of the tree, its hollow and secrets and messages. This book box is his way of honoring that presence and providing a home for the mockingbird. According to the American Library Association's Office for Intellectual Freedom, To Kill a Mockingbird is one of the most frequently challenged classic novels. Efforts to have it removed from school curriculum are documented from as early as 1977. Gabriella Pettit's striking three-dimensional interpretation of Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere exemplifies the physical and psychological transformation that the main characters go through to complete their journey. The inclusion of unconventional materials like erector set bolts, wire, and canvas combine to form the structure of this tunnel book. Each is thoughtfully incorporated and represent elements of London and the London below that Gaiman describes in the text. Following a parent complaint that cited strong language and sexual content, Neverwhere was removed from the library of a New Mexico school in October 2013, just two weeks after ALA's Banned Book Week. Celine Lombardi's fine binding interpretation of The House on Mango Street features blind tooling, which is when letters or designs are stamped onto the leather without any color for a more subtle effect. Lombardi uses Sandra Cisneros' own words to capture the playfulness of the girls in the book, as well as to highlight the importance of memory. The House on Mango Street is considered a groundbreaking work for and about young women. It has also faced controversy and has been challenged or banned by several school districts around the country, most notably in Arizona in 2012. Betsy Yu Stout's interpretation of In the Time of the Butterflies incorporates embroidery, which relates to the everyday tasks of Las Mariposas, the four sisters featured in the book. The simplicity of the stitches, the vibrant colors of the thread, the dark contrast of the black leather, and the brilliant touches of gold tooling echo the four sisters, each very different, but at the same time, a collective. In May 2022, in the Time of the Butterflies was challenged by a group of parents from an Ohio high school due to claims of sexually inappropriate content. The school board voted to keep the book in the curriculum. Like Mouse, Ellie Wiesel's book Night tells a first-hand account of the atrocities of Nazi concentration camps. This interpretation of Night by Kathy Adelman was bound to allow the image of barbed wire to show through the covers, drawing a powerful connection to the story. The use of parchment specifically was inspired by startling images Adelman saw on her visit in 1973 to Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem. In 2017, 
The Conejo Valley Unified School District in California developed an opt-out policy, which meant that parents could opt their children out of books on the core curriculum list. While no books were banned, enough parents opted their children out of night that a teacher could not effectively teach the book to their class. As you can see, the combination of literature and art, words and pictures, can take on many forms, from a graphic novel like Mouse, to traditional fine bindings, to conceptual book-based creations, the landscape of book arts is vast and diverse, and this is only scratching the surface. Want to take a deeper dive? All of the beautiful books featured in this video, plus many more from the One Book Many Interpretations exhibitions, are in the library's collection. Visit chipublib.org to make an appointment to view them in person in the Harold Washington Library Center Special Collections Reading Room. I hope to see you there soon!